Hey YouTube, I recently had a hard drive that went bad on me and I couldn't get into it. It had all my media and all of my movies and everything I've ripped onto it. And so I went through a bunch of different tutorials, a bunch of different blog posts and everything to try and get it to work. Well, here it is. Uh, it doesn't work, but I did get all of my data off of it. And I'll show you what worked for me so that you can hopefully get all your data without having to go to Best Buy and pay a whole bunch of money. Here's the dreaded error that I first got whenever I cracked open my PC after a Windows update. I saw this and I couldn't get into my drive which had all my media on it. So you're talking, you know, hundreds of episodes of Friends and, and other things that I ripped off of DVDs. And I did not want to redo that. I didn't want to lose all that data. So I started to try and figure out ways that I could recover it without having to just blow away the drive and reformat it. So where I started, I went to this page. I found this link after searching through a bunch of different ones. You know, this tells you how to fix this drive not accessible. Um, it starts you with trying to repair the drive, going into the command prompt, so you run it as administrator. I'll post a link to this page in the description. And so you run the check disk command, which uh, for me, it didn't do a whole lot. Like it ran and it seemed like it was successful, but nothing really changed. So you can run this and this will try to repair the drive if you use like the slash R. You can also access this from the boot menu. And so if you aren't able to get into the drive, you can run this command in safe mode. I tried that as well. I tried running in safe mode and doing check disk and trying to recover the drive, but that didn't, that didn't pay off for me either. Uh, from there, you can try to change the permissions. So change the permissions of the drive, especially if you're getting this access denied error, which is the error I was receiving. So you go in and you go into the advanced properties for that disk and go in and change it, uh, replace the owner on subcontainers and object, uh, doing one, something like this. And that should change the ownership for you. This also uh, wouldn't work for me. And eventually I figured out, you know, I was only able to run like one command on the disk drive, but we'll get more into that in a minute. And so if, if this had worked for me, then you would have been able to change the permissions. Another way to change the drive owner is this step 1A. We'll just keep going because that didn't work for me either. Uh, th these are all steps that you can try if you haven't done this already, but if none of this works, hopefully I can give you a command here at the end that will at least get you to get all your data out of that drive. So this is another one of permissions and assigning it to the administrators group. Uh, this is one I tried as well. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it didn't work, but you can assign it to the administrators group and try and get the permissions to access the drive that way as well. So th these are all like software permissions. Uh, maybe if you didn't have, you know, the, the right permissions on it, then it would, wouldn't work. So let's keep going. More permissions uh, instead of the administrators assigning it to everyone. This is in that same thread of changing permissions. And that's the end of it. So what is excluded out of here is going into the partition management software, which I'll show a screenshot here. This won't give you anything if, if the drive is not accessible, but if you are able to get in here and, you know, clear the drive, if, if you don't care about the data or, or if you need to, to change it in any, any other way, sometimes that'll work for you. There's also an option to do the disk part command in the command prompt. So I tried that. That also didn't work for me. It, it showed the drive, but it didn't let me get into it. And so I tried switching out the, the cable, the actual physical cable for the internal hard drive. That didn't work and actually broke my main hard drive. And so I had to reformat my main drive, which didn't have any data on it, luckily. But be careful with switching the cable, you know, to a different drive if you have multiple drives that will corrupt things and it's not something that you want to do. So be careful of that. What I did do, however, is I bought a enclosure. So I bought this enclosure off of Amazon. From there, I was able to actually try to boot the drive a different way 
instead of having to wait a really long time for my operating system to load and boot up and spin up because it's going to try to boot up that drive several times and eventually it just fails and, and continues into the normal boot sequence. But another option here, and, and eventually this led to me being able to access the drive. So if you're not able to get into the drive at all, try getting one of these enclosures. I'll post a link to this in the description and you can give it a try if you're, if you're stuck like I was. The final thing I tried to do was actually go to Best Buy and see what they could do for me. Whenever I went there, they told me that they, they couldn't get into the drive and it wasn't working and they needed to do a level two recovery. And so that means it was a $50 non-refundable fee and they gave me a range of between $250 and $1,600, which is insane. There's so much more I could do with that money. And if I have like a few pictures and some media files I want to recover, you know, a minimum you're going to look at $300. And I don't even, I don't even think that that included the new hard drive that they would need to put the data on. You're looking at that much money and then it was going to take three to four weeks. So I took it home, started shopping for other ways and actually figured out the way that I fixed the drive and was able to get all my data off of it. So the way I'm able to do this is I have this enclosure right here. So you just turn it on and plug it all in and it's plugged in here and then the power source is down there and then once it's connected you get one command and that should be able to let you do all this so you can copy it off of that drive all right check this out now if you run this command with x copy with e and i and whatever directory your source is and then the output it'll actually run. So, you know, whenever you're trying to go into your drive in here and it doesn't let you in, if you can run one command, you can copy all your files out and actually get stuff off of that drive. One suggestion that I learned out of all of this is it is expensive to recover your data. And so if you have important documents, family photos, what have you, those all need to go into multiple places. So back them up into the cloud, use something like Google Photos or Apple Photos or whatever backup into the cloud system you can use. AWS S3, if you're familiar with the cloud stuff, like S3 is bulletproof whenever it comes to backing up files and it's pennies on the dollar for, for backing things up. Dropbox is also another alternative. So utilize these different platforms in the cloud or utilize multiple drives so that you can make sure that you don't have to get into a scenario where you're paying $1,600 to go and back up a drive and get all that data that is really important to you. So make sure you're backing things up and uh, you don't risk losing all that important information. So do that and hopefully you can avoid a lot of these situations. If you learned something or you this helped you in any way, then please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.